Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're just waiting for SLP to log on and then we'll get started. Hi, for those of you who just logged on, we're going to get started momentarily. Hi, hey, hi. hey, a little technical drama. Are we all ready? It's five. <laughs> it's five oh three. Welcome to Watch Me Work. Happy twenty twenty three. It's Watch Me Work. We've been doing the show since like two thousand nine. So we're in our what is it, huh? Fourteen. About fourteen years. We're rolling into that. So that's something. Um, basically, Watch Me Work is a show where the me and the title is you and it's all about your work and your creative process and helping you keep that going when it was um during lockdown when we were during lockdown we, we did the show five days a week now we're back to one day a week on mondays every monday at five almost every monday and national holidays i think we take off um we thank the public theater and we thank howl round we thank lolly for pulling us all together um we love doing this on zoom it's easier than meeting in the lobby of the public theater like we used to but basically the format is the same we work for 20 minutes it's the sound of my timer we work for 20 minutes and then for the rest of the hour or so i take your questions about your work and your creative process so if you want to get in touch with me and ask me questions about your work and your creative process Lolly's going to tell you how to do it. Go Lolly. Yes. So if you are in Zoom with us, you can ask a question by 
uh, clicking the raise your hand button, which is likely in the reactions tab at the bottom of your screen. If you have any trouble finding it, you can just message me in the chat and I can help you out. Uh, if you're watching the stream on HowlRound, feel free to send us your questions via the Public Theater's Instagram or Twitter account or via Watch Me Works Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. That's hashtag H O W L R O U N D. All right. Thanks, Lolly. We're going to start our 20 minutes now, uh, so we'll get to work. And here we go.
All right, all right. All right, all right, all right. We are back. We are back. That's 20 minutes. Feel free to raise your hand if you have a question. Or we can sit in silence. Oh, it looks like Jillian has a question. You can unmute. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Hi. Hi. Uh, so one of my questions I have is what is your daily like writing process? Right. So yeah, so this is how this show works. What's your daily writing process? Oh, I can stay unmuted. All right, got it. Yes, you can. So got what's it. your Right, because what we we do in this in this uh, watch me work is we ask you about your creative process. So as much as we can, we try to you know because my daily writing process. Yeah, I get up at three in the morning and blah blah blah, and then feed the chickens. You know who cares, right? So I want to know what you do, and then we'll work with what where you are. You know what I'm saying? Got it. Yeah. So uh, I guess my my process right now is isn't much of one. I'm trying to find a process. Uh, uh -huh. So. Right now, what I, I think I struggle with is this uh, idea of uh, sitting down to write, getting in the flow on a more constant and consistent basis versus just these spits and spurts. Right, so what have you, what have you done that works? Hmm, I think what I've done that works and, and I find helpful is when I, I kind of vomit it all out. <laughs> <laughs> and it all just kind of ends up on the page. Uh, but it, it's, I can say there have been a few times in my life where that's happened, but I, I have to write outside of those times as well. So I, I think what's worked the best is when I've sat down and just everything's come out and it's on the page. <laughs> right, right. So let's get even more specific. Do you use a pen or a pencil or a computer? Got it. Yeah, uh, I typically use a pen and a pen and paper. I think helps me a lot. Is very okay. helpful. Okay. Okay. Notebook. Really Great. A notebook or just random pieces of paper. A notebook, definitely. Use a notebook. So the same notebook, notebook, like from you know, like you have one, you know, one notebook, or you have like a hundred notebooks around your. I have a hundred notebooks everywhere. Great. <laughs> so, right. so do you use one if you're like? You stick with one per week or you change notebooks up every day? Uh, it really, it really, I've been kind of into the legal pads recently, right. but it, it tends to just be whatever is near me at the time. Um, and then it'll end up usually near my computer and then I'll end up putting it into the computer and then I'll end up finding a different notebook. <laughs> and and you, you'd switch notebooks because you like to? Not really, just because the the moment to 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 write when it hits me, I, I'm just grabbing whatever's around. So great. OK, so. OK, so maybe and I don't know, I don't I don't know, but maybe some organization would help. Hmm. OK, maybe it might not. But like, you know. In my experience, the creative process is, you know, you you know, you don't just like wait till it rains and run around outside hoping getting struck, you're going to get struck by lightning, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, you think about it, that's a lot of work. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of what I call a necessary drama. Yeah. I love drama. I don't love unnecessary drama. Yeah. Get it? So mm -hmm. we keep our drama on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> so things that we can do to stay organized might be helpful. You know, some some people don't like organization. They think it fences them in. You know, mm -hmm. some people it, it helps them. Um, the Mississippi or the Nile, depending on what you like, is a great river. Uh, pr part of the reason is because it has banks. Mm -hmm. When you drive, yeah. stay on the road unless you want to go off road, and that's also a thing, mm -hmm. right? And you don't go yeah. off road unless you have an off road vehicle. And even then it's dicey, but do you see what I'm saying? There's like, there are structures. You walk around, I think for the most part in a body. 
helps you get to where you need to go. Right. If you walked around like in all your multitudinous selves, it would be kind of complicated to get to where, you know, to go to class or 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 your job or whatever. Right. Or even show up for this. Right. Yeah. We choose one thing to be like right now I'm choosing to be SLP and that's how I'm communicating to you. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Even though like Walt Whitman said, I contain multitudes and I do believe that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So. I would say, um, so how long, when you write, Jillian, how long do you like to write? You vomit it out, but how, you know, what, what is that like? Is that like a day's worth of writing? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, you like, what does it look like? Yeah. I feel like I create in the, the pauses. So at the, I, I, I see it like the end of a sentence, the end of a period I'm creating after that. So it's either at the end of the day or, uh, at the end of, um, you know, uh, a long stretch of work. So uh-huh. I'm, I'm finding that it comes and, and, I, and I do write and sit down to write. I don't want to say as an afterthought, but after I've done a lot of non-creative things. <laughs> do, you, do you enjoy that? Uh, it, it's just been my way of life. So I don't know if I necessarily even enjoy it. So I'm trying to train myself to do my creative work first and to not great. just create in the pauses. Great. Great. So what's, what's, what is first move? Do you, you have a day job? Sounds like no. Yes. Uh, no, no, not anymore. I got laid off. So <laughs> that's part right. of it too. So, okay. So are you a morning person, an afternoon person or a night person? Yeah. So I, I wake up usually in the morning, but I find I'm more creative in like the evenings. So. Okay. Well, let's, then let's pick, let's pick your favorite time which is the evening, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it's tricky because if you want to do your creative work first, but you're more creative in the evening. So pick, pick, pick a time right now when, you, when you'd like to um, do your creative work. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I think I'll do it, yeah, maybe in the afternoon versus- in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Okay, so great. So you're going to have to, so that's not first and you're okay with that. Well, actually I could do it first. I could do my, I could do my work, my walk, and then I just switch it and just do that early at like morning. You could, you could try it. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I'm saying try it for a week. Mm-hmm. This isn't yeah. like, you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to try it forever. You're going to try it, see if it works and then you're going to change up. So you're going to mm-hmm. try doing your creative thing early in the day. Mm-hmm. You said you'd like to do it first. So we're going to pick close to first, right? Yeah. So you get up, you do whatever you're, you know, and then you do your creative thing. Um, yeah. How long, what, what do you think? Um, 30 minutes? Is that, a, how long did, how did this 20 minute stretch feel? Uh, it didn't feel like enough time. I typically write for, or I'm in the process of writing for like hours at a time. So, Great. Like so maybe doing more consistent, shorter would be a good thing yeah. to try too. So let's do 30 minutes. Try 30 okay. minutes. Because again, you know, if you do like an hour, it's like, it's like, it's like dating, right? Mm -hmm. So you're dating somebody, right? So like every three years you have an amazing date. Oh my God. It's like the best date ever. Every like three years, you know, what kind of relationship is that? I don't know what your attachment styles are, but I would need something a little more consistent, right? Yeah. So we're going to go for maybe lower key, right? Displays of affection. Um, that are more consistent. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That makes sense. So if you can do every day for 30 minutes, it's also, or like exercise, if that offends anybody talking about romance, Um, you know, exercise, you want to do a consistent exercise, right? You want to go to the gym or, or do your yoga practice consistently, not like run a marathon like once a year and then the rest of the year you're eating fast food, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go 30 minutes every morning for the next week, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's doable, right? Yeah, and you just I think so. do your vomit method, right? And you're gonna do if you want a legal pad, that's fine. Put set up your your workspace the night before, if you can. Mm-hmm. Right. So have your legal pad there, have your pen there, have your area, whatever, desk, kitchen table, whatever you work on. 
have it all tidy and ready to go. So you don't have to like look for your legal pad. Mm -hmm. in the you don't want to be doing that. That's unnecessary yeah. drama, right? That's avoidable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then set your timer for 30 minutes and write, do your vomit, right? And then get on with the rest of your day. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Yeah, it's, I mean, see how it works. And then you check in with yourself and go, and go, okay, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to see how it works. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Or see how it works. Thanks. Great question. Great question for top of the year. Definitely. Okay. Uh, looks like we have Emmanuel. Hey, Emmanuel, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Hi. Did we meet outside the public theater? Yes, we did. I thought, I thought that great. I thought that was my imagination, but it was in fact you yep. in real time in the flesh. How are you doing, girl? In the flesh. I'm doing good. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Yeah. No, it was great. It was great. Everyone should go see the show. It's coming back, right? It's coming back in April. Place of the plague year. That is right. We were down with COVID, but they're bringing us back. So thank you. Thanks. And thanks for coming, Emmanuel. Really appreciate you being there. Sure. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah um so what's the question my question is so I've been trying to fill the well a little bit by reading uh a bunch of plays mm -hmm. and so my question would be because there are so many things that you can uh take notes on I guess or consider um and I tend to go a little bit too detail oriented so I could you know spend hours on one play going oh okay so what about this and I should note that and then rather than just kind of reading and reading so uh, my question would be um just different ways I guess of like uh extracting of filling the well I guess of, of what what do you extract and even same with like seeing plays so um I feel a bit guilty if I don't take notes on every single aspect of every single thing that I've seen but then it gets exhausting rather than just kind of Right. Um, absorbing things. Yeah. Great, great question. Yeah. We, you, we don't, I feel like, you, you know, if it's, if it feels exhausting then it's probably not the right move, right? If it feels like overwhelming and exhausting and the real, you didn't say this, but you know, pain in the butt, you know, yeah. it's probably not the right way to go. And you might be doing what you should think you should you know, I think I should be doing it like this, but it maybe not might not be the best way for you. Now, someone who loves to take details and, you know, yeah. they're, you know, they're taking notes on their phone yeah. during a show or whatever, you know, yeah. I mean, and they love it. Oh, my God, they feel so happy about it. Then, OK, that works for them. But um, you can you can just you can just read a play. If you're reading a play, read the play. I mean, try this out. Let's see how this feels. You read the play and then you go. Yeah. That was the story of that play was da 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 da. Yeah, cool. That's it. Mm. Oh my goodness. You're not gonna write a dissertation on it. <laughs> oh my goodness, you're not gonna break down the plot in intricate detail. Nah. Nah, okay. you're just gonna you're just gonna fill the well. Right? So it's very um it's 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 important work. But it's not like you're you're preparing for a test, right? There might be something you read that you might go, I want to read that again and and really write down, you know, note down the structure of it or something like that. There's might be something, but it sounds like not everything is going to feed you that way, right? You know, you want to. Um, sometimes you want to just go out and have a a nice meal with a friend. You don't want to like take notes of what the chef did. Oh, they use that sauce. Ah, oh, okay. Right. And, and then they cooked it for 12 minutes on each side. Oh, okay. It might, if that doesn't feel like, if it, it sounds like it's going to get in the way of you enjoying yourself. So, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. you want, yeah. I mean, that, that's what I do. Yeah. What do you say? I think that's great it's kind of it's what I do a lot of the time but I feel guilty because when I do take the time to take these notes I'm like oh I'm getting so much out of you know like I'm learning a lot and you know I'm gonna remember this now so it's just I guess the guilt because I most of the time I don't 
um so like before I left France I got rid of all of my playbills and like no because I had piles and bags and bags of them because I was like I'm gonna go back I'm gonna remember these plays and I'm gonna take right. notes of them and then I was just like I can't and I just kind of got rid of them but now but I know that doing that helps solidify things so I guess it's the 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 balance of like it feeling like a burden like I know I could get a lot out of this by taking the time to you know dissect it okay. um and then not doing it. I know I know the words the word I was I don't know what I was reading at some point dissecting things yeah I love these words um I mean, and I, you know, I've, I've used plenty of them before. That's why I've sort of on, I sort of listen to myself talk, dissecting a play. Um, I heard people who come out of a certain writing program used to be the language. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to break the back of my play. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to crack it, you know, words like this, but dissecting a play, you're going to kill it, you're <laughs> gonna cut it open. And you're going to figure out how it works. Uh, play will not deliver its mysteries to you. If you kill it, cut it open <laughs> and see how it works. No, I'm just saying, I'm saying this for everybody. This is just for you. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I, we, we use that language because that's the language we're taught to use, right? So I, I would suggest that just as an experiment, right, you just read some plays and go, huh, yeah. I mean, how about this? When you read a play, because reading a play, you can like pick it up and read it and then put it down. It's not going to cost you much money or, you know, oh my God, I spent $80 going to such and such play, blah, 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 right? It's a, it's a low, you know, it's just your time, right? How about with the plays you read? Just read them, just as an experiment. Read them. And go, yeah, and see if you can tell yourself the story of the play. And then go on to the next one. You might, oh, if you want to write down the story of the play, just at, from your memory. And then go on to the next one. Be gentle with yourself. Mm -hmm. And maybe when you go to a play, you might want to be a little more detailed because it's, it's cost you some, some coin, you know what I mean? And some time. But just as an experiment, be trust your process more how about that as an experiment be more trustful of your creative process <laughs> yeah sometimes i mean and that's not just you Emmanuel. sometimes we all clench right i have to figure this out <laughs> you know woo, that's you know i mean i'm the you know if i were the muse i'd be like i'm sorry i gotta go somewhere else you know <laughs> I don't want to be dissected. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So just as an experiment, put more trust in your creative process. And know that the stories will come. You do the work, but you don't have to do the work like this. You can, you can do the work like this. You know, where you, I know, and no one, none of us are going to think you're lazy. And the muse will not think you're, you're, you know, you're slacking. You know, you're not slacking. You're trusting. You know, it's, it's, and again, it's like dating. Sorry. I mean, if people are like, dang, she talks about dating, but you know, again, you're in a relationship, you cling to that person. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, you know, you know, you're not trusting love. You got to trust. You got to be like, it feels good. Yeah. Right. You know, you know what I mean? I do. See, as an experiment, just to see, just for the next two plays you read. And maybe you want to read them twice. Maybe you want to underline a little bit in margin. I like underlining shit and going, wow. I was just reading Chekhov. I was like, wow, in the margin. Like, wow. Like, oh boy, that's a great comment. Wow. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes. That's great. Okay, great question. Oh, there's such good questions today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. So glad you're Thank here you. in New York. Thank you. Thank you. I hope Thank we don't all ruin it, America. No. Come on, America. <laughs> we should say our ABCs together. <laughs> anyway, like how Hakeem Jeffries did. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan, you can unmute. Hey, Jonathan. Good to see you, bro. How you doing? 
It's good to see you again. Yeah, um, likewise. Happy to be here. Um, let me make sure my volume. I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, so here's the question that I have. Um, much of my much of my work, I love to um, uh, take moments in history, kind of excavate and dig, and and create stories based on um, historical events. Mm -hmm. And often in that, I love like to research and dig and find like information and books and 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 weird scholarly academic articles that somehow help. But um, I'm actually posed or challenged right now uh, with the play that I'm currently working on, where it's like, I know that the thing that, hap that what happens in the play is a thing that happened and would have happened. But, but now I'm stumped with actually being able to figure out how to research and find um, um, I just had to to, to go on the on the, the process of researching it because it it it's a history um, that is just not really written about very much. Um, and so I don't know. And and there's a part of me too that's like, well, forget that. Just like write and have fun and see where that goes. But I think I'm also just struggling with the fact that it bothers me that there's not anything there already. Uh, so it's kind of what I've been struggling with lately. Right. Okay. So so you you love to write things about history and historical facts and historical characters. And you're writing something about an historical event or characters and the historical record doesn't give evidence of it actually having happened. Is actually, that what the people, but basically, it's um, um, about young queer people um, during Freedom Summer uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, and it's like, well, obviously we were there. Like, it's not like we, but but it's like trying to find that intersection between um, LGBTQ stories and the movement. And that has been such a struggle. Um, right. Once I was thinking to myself, well, you know, think about the elders in your community. And then it get bothered by the fact that when I think of that, I'm like, it weirds me out that I don't, I know very few gay elders, which is weird to oh. me. So, yeah, I know, right? So. Well, I, I, I actually, honestly think, Jonathan, they might be two separate issues. Okay. One is the 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 fact that you as a person sounds like it would be great if you could spend some time. What a great thing to do this year. Spend some time connecting with some gay elders. Right. Yeah. That would be great. That would be a wonderful thing. Just because it's always wonderful to connect with elders. What you know, you know, right. elders, you know, I don't know how old you are, whatever, what you're thinking. But but it's always wonderful to connect with people yeah. of another generation who were uh there uh or or more, let's say more there than you were more there than we were whatever right that's yeah, always yeah. a great thing uh connect with them online connect with them in person you know since people are getting back together and having coffee or tea or whatever that's a great thing to do so that is one thing and the second thing is there's you said you're correct me if I'm wrong you're it's upsetting to to realize that those stories aren't haven't been written down yet right yeah yeah okay yeah so you know make them up <laughs> I mean what are we doing you know what I mean yeah Great I enough. mean you got you have a poetic license son okay you know? You say what you what you, wait what you just gonna keep it in your pocket laminated and cute? <laughs> what why do you have a poetic license? What's it for? <laughs> but to make shit up. To make shit up, right, right. Because um, that because that's I mean because that's what we're doing in real life anyway. Right. We're just making stuff up, and sometimes it gets recorded, written down, and sometimes it doesn't. Right. And most of the time it doesn't. So you fill in the gaps with your, as my son says, imagination. 
That's what he does. My imagination. <laughs> you know, does that make sense? It makes sense. So, yeah. But there's two things. There's two things. One, and I'm not saying hang out with elders so you can interview them to use their stories. I, I'm not saying that because that is that's an, another thing. That's right. permission to use somebody's story. That's and that's for, you know, I'm going to hang out with elders so then I can use their stories so then I can enrich myself. I'm not suggesting that, actually. I'm suggesting hang out with elders because it's going to help both groups of folks. Right. You know what I mean? It's going to it's going to fuel your spirit and it's going to fuel theirs. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll 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 you'll see the evidence of things uh, having happened and they'll see evidence of the transmission. And it's going to be great. OK, but that's not but it's not going to be fodder for your your work. Eh, right. I'm not saying that. I'm saying make shit up, bro. Make stuff up. Who do you want to see? Who do you wish were written down? Right. That person, that activist, that person, that whatever, whatever, make them up. You know, mm -hmm. tell the stories you, you want to read in history books. It's fiction. And just because it's fiction doesn't mean it's any less real. And then maybe more people will start writing about it. Maybe or maybe not. It doesn't matter. No, I mean, that maybe it could inspire people to write about it. You know what I mean? Sure, sure, sure. I mean, we're just concerned about you right now and getting you to be inspired to write about it. So <laughs> one person at a time. We're just, just you. If you could get inspired to write about it, you know. Fill in, the Fill in the blanks. You know? I'm okay. not going to laminate it and put it in my back pocket. I promise. There you go. There you go. Okay. Thank Great, you, question. Great question, Ra. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hannah, it looks like you're up next. Hi. Thank you so much for doing this. I uh, was listening to one of the recordings of this last week and was so happy to hear that it's coming back. So I felt like part of the Zoom, even though I was just watching on my computer. Um, my my question is about uh, like the first thing that I do in my process, which for many years I write in the mornings has been morning pages. And, you know, you write three pages longhand and you get it all out. And I just feel like over the last six or eight months, I, I've i been not, I, I don't know, like averse to morning pages or like I, I do them and I, it just makes me feel antsy that I'm not writing yet. So I, I can't tell. And I've experimented like stopping them. I didn't do them at all this summer. It didn't seem to like cause a problem, but like, I know they've historically been a very useful tool for me in the past. So many writers swear by them. So I don't know any thoughts on like should I just like ditch that part of the routine or the, like what might be happening there? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. Um, so how's the rest of your artistic process? It's going really well. Like I feel very inspired. I'm getting a lot of work done. Huh? And I think maybe that's like part of why I'm like, do I really need these things? But then I'm like, maybe I should be like feeding the fire for the future. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to every season, you know, there's a there's an activity that's appropriate, right? So, I mean, you, you did sort of put them down, uh, and and Hannah's. I if I'm correct me if I'm wrong. The it's the what is it? The artist way, Julia yeah. Cameron. That we talking about. Great. So, for those people who don't know what you're talking about, yeah, three pages longhand. Um, yeah, um, maybe. I mean, do you, so you're kind of antsy about it, yeah. Maybe it needs a different kind of structure. Mm -hmm. Maybe 20 minutes longhand. Hmm. It's not page count, it's time. Hmm. You know? Yeah, that'd be interesting. Because it's um it's it's a different feeling mm -hmm. uh, that might be helpful. You know, and see see if that works. And then but as long as you're you're continuing to do your other work, that's what's good. You're you're continuing to do your other creative work. So that's that's good. So see, just try that. And if that does, if it feels superfluous and unnecessary, then then put them down for a little while. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's it, uh, you know, it's not like anything you know bad is going to happen. You you proved it. You put them down this summer and you kept working. So it's it's good. I, I mean, do you use them as part of your process? I know this is supposed to be about I me. Do, yeah, I do a lot of things. I, mm -hmm. I mean, we. I have an eleven year old. Do you have an eleven year old? 
I have a two-year-old. I think part of that crunch is like why I'm oh, like, I have to use this time to write, you know? Lord have mercy, I have a two-year-old. Okay, well, see, we're in different places on that train, <laughs> right? Right? Now, I, I do a lot of a lot of different things mm-hmm. at different times. Mm-hmm. Um, and I travel a lot, you know? I'm in rehearsal right now again. So I have to really work, uh, you know, it's like I'm in rehearsal, so it's different. It's, it's always like a moving, a moving thing. So I got to kind of do whatever it's going to work on the day. Yeah. Well, I, I like that. Um, I, I, that's a great suggestion to think about the timing versus the page count. Cause yeah, sometimes it does feel like I'm just racing to the end and then I'm like, what am I getting out of it? But yeah. Yeah. But the time, I think what might be kind of relaxing, you know? Um, I mean, do you have a meditation practice? No. <laughs> that that might be helpful yeah even if it's like a a five minute meditation practice mm-hmm. and then a 10 minute timed morning pages practice mm-hmm. you know you know what i mean just sitting and breathing meditation is really good and yes i do meditation practice and i can i try to add it in wherever i am mm-hmm. It helps, it helps clear the mind or still the mind or helps you think clearly, especially with a two-year-old <laughs> and with an 11-year-old, it helps. And, you know, and you train, I mean, I'm sorry, I hate to say this word, but I have, I trained, we trained my son. He, um, I know that when I became a mom, I wanted him to, when he started crawling out of his crib, I wanted him to crawl into the living room and see mommy meditating. Mm-hmm. I wanted to impress that on his psyche that mommy was doing this thing, sitting on the floor, you know, that he would later come to ask, what is it? What are you doing? That kind of thing. So that, because it's important, I think for kids to know that their moms, especially, but their dads also, you know, have things to have lives that are, that are embracing of their theirs, but also that have, they have their own thing that they do, you know, that is quiet, silent, and still. And just to see your parent do that, I think, you know, helps yeah. them learn something about the world. <laughs> True. So, but two, whoa, girl, you in the trenches. Good for you. Good for you. Bless you. Lots of blessings. Thank you so much. Yeah. But try the time thing that could, maybe that could help. I mean, see what it lo- feels like. And then, you know, in a couple of weeks, you'll have a, a different, you know, have a, a, a reaction, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I mean, I use the timing for like the, for my writing. I just do. Okay. Like, so yeah. I, and that works really well there. So. Okay. Okay. So maybe 20 minutes, maybe 10 minutes of pages. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. just a little, just, just kind of touch it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Just touch it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have two more minutes and one final question. I'll do a quick answer. (laughs) Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Yep. Hi, I'm Gitanjali. Um, I'm in Toronto. Hey, Gitanjali. Hey. uh, This is not maybe not going to be a short answer. I'll just ask the question anyways. Maybe next time you can answer it. So. I'm trying to start a script writing process for a new piece, but I want to build the script based on um, improvisations with actors. So rather than, you know, like devise theater. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts for how to do that. I've, I've done it once before where like a choreographer and uh, me, like I showed them some of my ideas and prompts. They were like, you know, from objects to poetry to whatever. And then we devised something out of that. But this is going to be kind of different. And so, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to go about it. So cool. So let's see as fast as I can. Do you know you have your actors picked out already? I have ideas, but I haven't got them picked out. Okay. So. Uh, do you know kind of generally what kind of you want to, the story you kind of want to tell? Yep. Great. Okay. So you yeah. kind of know that. So you write some prompts on some cards, right? Pick your actors and just throw okay. yourself in the room with them. 
get a get a regular meeting time explain to them very clearly what the parameters are okay how do i know what the parameters are well well it's tricky because you're inviting people to help you create your work which is a unless the parameters are very clear mm. that is a minefield because that's that runs smack into like ownership and stuff oh yes that's a big that's a tricky one mm -hmm. so uh, if you've done it before maybe you can lean on your experiences before with the choreographer mm -hmm. um, um but that's that's very that's very tricky you have to explain to them that this is you know is it going to say by Gitanjali? you know what i mean is it's going to say by the group right and which, what, I, which i haven't done before but yeah I feel what like does that mean yeah what does that mean like if it's say just you know best scenario, it's, it's gonna on it's gonna you know if it's on whatever broadway or your favorite theater or whatever you know it's it's going to be a a rights issue. So think about that before you invite people in. Mm -hmm. And also think about why you want to invite people in to write it like that. Because you could also, of course, write it by yourself. I could. You know, actually, I don't, I don't think with this piece, I could, I think with other pieces, sure, I could be like yeah. the playwright. Okay. Okay. So just do a little bit of back, a little bit of research as to how that all works out. You know what I mean? Maybe there's somebody who's created something like that before you can ask them. Yeah, uh, that's what I, yeah. I don't know. I don't personally, I don't know how that, how that all plays out, but you'll want to know that before you invite actors into the process, because they're going to be giving of their creative selves and you want to totally. make sure they're protected and respected, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but then write about a whole bunch of prompts and, and ideas on some cards and just start meeting with them regularly and talking with them about it. I think the project, I mean, I think the process will naturally unfold, you know, mm. but we can talk more about it in a couple of weeks. I think we're off next week because of it's MLK day. Is that correct? Yes, we're off next week. We're back January 23rd, same time. Same time. So we can pick this up when mm. we go back. I have to jump and Thanks. put on a dress and go to a gala. So. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to go. Thank you all. Um, we love you guys. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you. Great questions. Happy New Year. We'll see you next time. See you soon.